pick an arc, any arc. Once you've picked your arc, I want you to form a whole bunch of angles, a whole bunch of different ones, on the circumference that are all standing on this arc. And they can be anywhere. In fact, I'm just about to draw a new one. This one over here. Zoop. Okay. So pick an arc, any arc. And then please draw a variety of angles that stand on that arc, just like I have. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm going to draw the next one. Next two. You can draw all of these if you want. Same way. It's still an angle at the center, still an angle at the circumference, still standing on the same arc. Okay. <coughs> right, whoops, wrong color. Okay, so as promised, these are going to go a little bit quicker. I'm just going to show you the guts of these. And in the exercise, in the exercise, the formal proofs for these actually appear, so you can have a go at them at the time. So what have we just drawn over here? What I've got is I have, um, there's a couple of different ways to say this. I have angles at the circumference. Have a look at all those guys up the top. They're all on the circumference, and in addition to that, they are all standing on the same arc. Okay, so I'm about to complete this sentence, but I want you to have a look at those angles, and I want you to imagine how you would complete the sentence. What do those angles all look like up there? Like, look at their sizes. Look at their sizes. They all look equal, don't they? Right? Um, some of the ones at the top, they look like they're in an isosceles triangle, but when you have a look at some of these down the bottom, you're like, oh, that's not isosceles anything, right? But these angles, their magnitudes, and I'm just going to mark them in now, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, they sure do look equal, don't they? Now, some things look equal and they're just coincidental, and that's why we apply deductive logic and use properties to see if we can try and prove that they're equal or not equal or whatever, okay? So, these are angles at the circumference. What did we just prove in relation to angles at the circumference? Have, have a look. The, the angle that corresponds to that but at the center, right, should be double the angle of the circumference. Do you agree? So here's what I want you to do. And if you have another color, that would be really, really useful. But if you don't, it's okay. I want you to draw the angle at the center that's standing on this arc. Okay, so I'm going to draw, where, where does it look? Uh, maybe about there. Okay, find the center, draw the angle standing on your chosen arc, but at the center, like so. Uh, you get the idea. Okay. Now, let's give this angle a size. Let's just describe it, let's just call it for the sake of it, 2 theta. Now, what we've proven earlier is if you have a look at this angle right up the top, this nice one up here, yesterday we proved that this angle is what in relation to this 2 theta? It's half, isn't it? So that makes this angle over here theta. Okay? But we just proved that even when that angle at the circumference is in a weird awkward spot like over here, the same property still exists. This one is still half. Or saying it from the other point of view, this one is still double. Okay? So therefore, it's not just this guy that's theta. If this is half of this angle, well, this is half of that angle at the center as well. This guy is theta just like the top one is theta, for the same reason. And so is this one, and so is this one, and so is this one. Okay? So angles at the circumference that all stand on the same arc are equal. That's one way to say it. 
A very slightly quicker way to say it, which you'll probably prefer to write because it uses less words and shorter words, is angles in the same segment. Angles in the same segment are equal. Now, remember, think back to what a segment is. What is a segment? And where is the segment in this case? A segment is part of a circle that's cut off by a what? A chord, very good. So here is the chord in question. Here's the chord. You see the top part of the circle? This guy up here? That's all a segment. And every single angle you draw in there will be exactly the same size, okay? Which is kind of cool, okay? Now, we're gonna take all of these and prove two more properties that are really, really quick. And they both have to do um, with a shape called a cyclic quadrilateral. Wrong color. Okay. Down here, I have a couple of small circles. And I have in them a minor arc and a major arc. They correspond to the same patch. So maybe you want to label that's a minor arc. So for example, if this was PQ and these are the same spots, P, wrong color, and Q, if you wanted to describe the arc between P and Q, you would default to be the short one, but maybe you want the longer one, so you would call this the major arc. Okay. Now, I'm going to draw, I still need these, I'm going to draw the angle at the center and the angle at the circumference standing on each of these arcs. It's really easy for short arcs. We're used to seeing this. That's what the angle at the center looks like. And that's what the angle of the circumference looks like. Okay, now think with me, because this is trickier. What does the angle at the center look like for this big arc? Here's the center. Here's the angle that stands on that arc. But which angle actually stands on this arc and not that arc? Look carefully. This one's here in the middle. It's not going to be this guy, is it? Because this is a different arc to that one. It's going to be the one on the outside. We have a name for this. It starts with an R. Do you remember what it is? It's a, it's a reflex angle, right? So it's going to be this guy. This guy around here. Okay, do you see it? Do you see it? So this guy's going to be two beta. It's double because at the center. Okay, now just as tricky. Where's the angle at the circumference? Ah, it's up in here, isn't it? I, I can put it anywhere I like up here, but it has to be on that spot, okay? In some ways, you can imagine this getting bigger and this, this angle here closing up, okay? So that guy up there is beta, okay? Here comes the fun part. We're gonna put both of these diagrams on top of one another, okay? So this guy and this guy, we're gonna put on here. Watch carefully. Here is the minor arc and its angle, alpha to alpha. The major arc is already there, I'm just not highlighting it. This angle here, 2 beta, goes around here, do you see that? Where's the final angle below? It's up the top, right? I haven't drawn it yet, so let's put that guy in. Do you agree? Everything is as from these two diagrams down here. Okay, two alpha plus two beta. That's the angles at the center. They're the only angles at the center. What are they equal to? Reason? Angles at a point or at a revolution add up to 360 degrees. So therefore, if you divide everything by two, what do you get? But have a look at alpha and beta. Where are alpha and beta? They're at the circum they're both at the circumference, right? Here, that's a bad alpha, sorry, it looks like an X. And up here, right? So this big shape here, it's four-sided, so we call it a quadrilateral. All of its points, one, two, three, four, they're all in the circumference. So we call it our cyclic quadrilateral. These guys here are the opposite angles. So here's the wording, you ready? I can fit it up here. 
opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral because that's what the shape is called, right? What are they? What's their relationship? They are, one word, supplementary. Okay, 